On March 14, 2017, authorities were dispatched to the home of a seven-year-old in rural Oregon. A disturbing story. He was severely underweight and had untreated injuries. He struggles with behavioral issues due to a lack of socialization, and the emotional scars from this neglect made it hard to find a loving home. As a victim of criminal neglect, a lawsuit was filed in his name against his abuser with the intention of creating a trust to pay for his care. His name is Justice, and this is his story. So I got uh, an email one day from another rescue and they sent one photo along with it and they were, that rescue was full so they were asking us if, if we could help. The owner had agreed to surrender the horse, the neighbor had talked her into it. So we agreed we'd take him on and he was in a lot worse condition than I had anticipated or that the photo had even shown but she did sign over surrender forms just so that he would legally be ours. And um, we took him straight to the vet at that point. He was neglected, uh, lived alone. He was underweight, but emaciated. You could see his ribs. Uh, and when, uh, when they got out there and took a look at him and ultimately rescued him, we found that in addition to being emaciated, he had lice, he had rain rot, um, behavioral problems, and he, as a result of that abuse that he suffered, uh, he has veterinary care, behavioral issues that he's going to be dealing with for the rest of his life. We are no longer in a point as a country where I own the animal is a legitimate excuse for cruelty. Whether this animal is owned or unowned, whether the animal is owned by the defendant or by someone else, whether the, the abuse happens in private or in public, the only way to make sense of laws that encompass all of that as being cruel is to realize, as the Oregon Supreme Court does, that at its heart, those laws are about protecting animals. Those laws are saying, these are creatures that suffer when they are injured, that experience the pain of hunger when they are starved. Animal cruelty is wrong because it causes harm to a living, feeling creature. What was the total time that his recovery took? Sometimes he's still in it. <laughs> he, um, it probably took four months to get him to a healthy enough weight and then the liver issue took a year and a half or so um, to get past that. He was on, we took him to the university, he had ultrasounds. He was on antibiotics for several months. I wanna say it took almost two and a half years. It took a long time. His abuser pled guilty to animal cruelty but only paid restitution. Uh, up until 2017, which was the date that she pled guilty. He was nowhere near being done, recovered. So his vet bills continued. So people say, oh, they had to pay. They only had to pay until the court hearing was done, not until he was physically better. And that's not even taking into account, like, um, the mental aspect of it and that is reflected in his behavior you know, that we still deal with now. As a result of Justice's abuse, he has behavioral, veterinary, and special housing needs that will affect him for the rest of his life. So now the question is whether the courts will recognize his right to a remedy that redresses these lifelong injuries. Because of this, the Animal Legal Defense Fund is representing Justice in a landmark case in which Justice is suing his abuser to cover his lifelong medical care. We're arguing that 
animal abuse victims uh, have the right to sue their abuser and, and to, be, to be compensated for injuries that they've suffered as a result of illegal animal cruelty. Without ALDF, I think the case wouldn't exist. This knowledge going forward, this uh, trying to get him a safety net for the remainder of his life, it, it wouldn't have happened. It's important to structure it this way, but both uh, having justice as the plaintiff in the lawsuit and having a specially created trust for justice um, because if, if it were just a, uh, a human, if the human were the named plaintiff, there would be no requirement that they spend the money on justice's behalf. Um, and, and so it's, uh, it's absolutely critical that justice himself is the plaintiff in the lawsuit and not, and not, just, not just somebody else. The sad fact is there are countless communities around the country where there aren't resources to address the needs of animal victims, where animal victims either don't get the medical care they need and therefore live lives of suffering or abbreviated lives where they die early, or where animals are euthanized rather than giving them the care they need. And neither of those are fair or just outcomes. We shouldn't have crime victims suffering because we don't want to hold their abusers accountable. And we shouldn't be killing animals rather than getting those animals easily accessible veterinary care. It comes down to a matter of the person who did the criminal abuse paying for the criminal abuse, that should be the answer. And the issue is just the law hasn't caught up with itself. In Oregon, the law already states that animals have the right to not be abused and that the victim of a crime has the right to sue their abuser to cover medical care and losses. So the Animal Legal Defense Fund is simply asking Oregon to uphold the laws already on the books. Because of this, Oregon is the best place to argue Justice's case in the country. And there are two instances in which Justice's case can leave a legacy of protection for animal crime victims to come. So on the one hand, abused animals should have their medical needs met so they don't suffer unnecessarily, and the people who pay for that care should be the people who caused the abuse. And people in other states, voters in other states, can encourage their lawmakers to pass laws that cover that. We also have the avenue of case law, where judges are, are creating new law by deciding cases. And there, justice's case is going to be part of a long and growing narrative of animals improving their position under the law. And that's true for animals in Oregon and of animals throughout the country.